Hello, this is Dave Vasco, Director of Advanced Technology at Rockwell Automation. We're live streaming from Automation Floor, and we're joined here today by Kim Taylor of Cluster. Welcome, Kim. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Excited to be here. My first automation fair. We're really glad to have you. You've you had a remarkable past. I mean, if you've, um, this is your second company, Cluster. I know your first one you exited a few years ago to John Wiley and Sons. Yeah, that's right. Um, so this is my second venture back company. Both were funded by uh, Mark Cuban. And I began my career um, in online learning and online recruitment. And so my first company was in the online learning space. I sold it to John Wiley and Sons in 2016. And then I got the entrepreneurial bug again and was just really thinking about what to do next. And a little background, as you know, I, I grew up in Wisconsin and my family was actually in advanced manufacturing, so in metal injection molding. And then my brother was a CNC programmer and he actually did a formal apprenticeship in the late 90s. So kind of you know went back to my past and was revisiting that and, and looking at the market and everything that was happening and realized I, I really liked recruitment, I really liked the workforce development component, but wanted to do something with the manufacturing sector. So you have this manufa you have manufacturing background, it's in your, in your blood, in your family, yeah. and you have this educational background. What, it's a great match for what we're seeing today. How, how much has manufacturing changed since your family grew up, I know it, I, my dad worked in a plant, and it was it was dirty and dark and dangerous, and and now it's so much different. What, how, how have you seen it changed? Yeah, I, I think um, it was it was always innovative, but now I think what we're seeing is this kind of intersection of hardware and software. Where I think we used to be in a world where people. And I think people still wrongfully associate manufacturing with assembly or with simply low-level production. And I think the main thing that's really changed is it's now completely driven by technology. And so the roles are changing really rapidly, and, and, and I think that's exciting. And so I, I'm excited to help the industry kind of tell that story about how different it's become. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, look, I go to these environments today, and... I'm jealous. I get to make the tools, but other people get to apply it and actually make these incredible things. But uh, it's amazing to see what's happened. So now you, at Cluster, you are trying to make this connection. We have these manufacturers who really need talented people. We have people that want jobs or want a better job. How are you making these connections? How are you helping people to actually make those connections and get into manufacturing? Yeah, absolutely. So Cluster is a new category of tech company that is called a labor marketplace. And so we are specialized for this vertical, so for industrial tech. So on one side of our marketplace, we have employers that, that pay us. And on the other side, we have talent. And really what we focus on is more effectively matching people to both jobs and training and assessments based on the exact technology used at that company. So really what we're seeing is jobs and companies are becoming more specialized. And really the way it was working before to me felt kind of broken where you have employers that desperately want people, you've got people spamming you know, resumes to hundreds of people and trying to match keywords and that felt really inefficient. And that we believe that we could actually create a common language between employers and talent based on technology, based on processes, based on types of software that could one, not only match people better, but two, also help people understand how to move between industries. So we're in Los Angeles, so we predominantly serve a lot of uh, aviation, aerospace, uh, EV type companies. And so what we see there is we see people that want to move, like they want to move you know, from medical devices to aerospace, or they want to move from aerospace to, to automotive. So we help them understand how those skills translate and what types of companies would be the best fit for them. So can you tell me a little bit more about the assessment? So do the companies that you're hiring, do they help contribute to the assessments and, and how, mm -hmm. what you developed? Yeah, you know, it's interesting, actually, the, the first assessment um, we do is actually on the company side and it's around values. Yeah. And so the biggest interesting, uh, the biggest indication if someone's going to be uh, successful in a role at the company, beyond, of course, needing to have the right hard skills, is actually that they share the company's values. And so really what that means, it's, it's not, oh, do I want to go have a beer with this person? It's really, do we, do we value the same things? And that means they'll work well together. So one of the things that we do is actually help employers understand 
what their what their team kind of DNA is. That's that's an interesting approach, and I think that really, if you look at somebody that's been at a job a long time and really thrived at it, the the value match is really a critical part of that. Yeah, and that's I, probably overlooked by, by people. Yeah, abs absolutely. I think. Um, I think I always say t on the talent side too that one person's dream job is another person's <laughs> nightmare. Yeah. And so I think on both sides, we can do a better job of just understanding some people like a lot of structure, they like a lot of process, they wanna do the same thing every mm -hmm. day. For someone else, they might wanna be in a more uh, startup environment where things are really ambiguous, uh, maybe not as, you know, not, as, not as stable. And so I think even understanding that is gonna be more important, not just this industry, but in, in all industries. So once you get past that initial stage where you're going through the value assessment and value matching, I assume that you're looking at technical skills and the match there. How does that process work? Yeah, so we actually onboard the employers in a really similar way that we onboard the talent. So we'll actually go through everything you're kind of using in your supply chain that is specific to that role. Mm -hmm. So that might be, you know, that might be materials, that might be the brands of CAD software that you're using, um, that might be the type of production that you're doing, or you know, it might it might involve programming languages if it's like a more mechatronics-driven role. So we're kind of getting into the weeds of that, of yeah. just being like, what is what is the key piece of this job? Like, what is the main thing that you have to know and how could we better match? It might actually be a certification. So mm -hmm. if it's a defense company, um, you might have to just uh, first look at security clearance before you're looking at anything else if you want to work on a satellite program um, yeah. in America. Or it might be like, wow, I, I really want someone that has um, this solid work certification at this level and that's what's important to us. Um, so I think we kind of get into the weeds of that and these were things that we actually, in many cases, weren't even making it into the job descriptions. And so we really kind of dive in deep to categorize jobs in different ways. And that makes sense. So what are the real, you're looking at really the critical factors the employer wants to, to find the right person. Okay, so you, you talked about mismatches, and maybe yeah. so there has to be mismatches. You have people, you have employers, and there's gaps in between. What do you, what do, you do? Do you do anything to help people um, as far as the skills or suggest how to bridge that gap between the two places? Yeah, absolutely. As someone that has a, a background in online learning, I think a lot about that. And when you look at the environment that we're in right now, we have a tight labor market. We have a big wave of retirements so that's going to hit our industry. So I think employers are now realizing you can't just get the perfect candidate yeah. the way the way that you <laughs> used to and that they might have to create <laughs> their perfect candidate or you know but part of what we try to do is to help someone understand like okay maybe you're 80% of the way there yeah. this is the other 20% of things that you need here's how we could match you to you know to training or in some cases the companies might be willing to hire them anyway mm -hmm. and train them in that thing if they have the, you know the core kind of pieces that they that they need in that role and I think that is quickly becoming the reality and I think companies that do promote training and kind of you know embed learning into work those are going to be the most successful and most competitive companies yeah we, we have that experience ourselves and we're actually working with the companies we have a program called advanced automation yeah. Academy of advanced automation and um, what we actually find, Academy for Advanced Manufacturing, what we find is that we're able to train somebody and give them a minimal employable skill in about 12 weeks. That's great. But it still takes about another year of working on the job to really fit in to really make that initial gap. But the people know hiring somebody in, they'll actually be able to reach that final level and that, that goes a long way. And so it's part of the company's uh, taking the responsibility for doing the additional training and it's part of the people themselves upskilling them getting themselves ready for that yeah abs absolutely and I think that's a that's going to be a really critical piece I mean ideally you hire the perfect person and they're ready to go hit the ground running but I think what we're seeing in all industries is that's not that's just not the case anymore and so thinking about ways you can get them up to speed faster or you know even in our case we're looking at data points like military occupation codes of yeah. being like okay if this person that you know came out of the Air Force or the Navy has these skill sets here's how we could round them out and you know get them to a company. I'm even wondering at times do you, do you really even want the perfect person so I hire for research labs and if I had a person that hit all the, mm -hmm. the marks, I it'd probably be the wrong person because they would just be the right person for that day. I want a person that's growing, that's continuously learning, and um, is willing to actually evolve with the job itself. 
Oh, absolutely. And I think that's why you see people that come from other industries become so successful because they have that breadth of perspective. Yeah. Um, they have different ideas and different ways to do things and they can, they can bring um, a lot of different types of processes there. Yeah. But I, I completely agree. So what's the biggest surprise you've seen in going into this that, you know, I, ha I know there has to be challenges in actually upskilling the people and actually making the matches. What's the biggest surprise you've seen? You know, the, the thing is, at the, at, the core, at the core of this is a person. Yeah. And I, I think automation can be scary. So I don't think everyone's going to, we're going to automate all the jobs away and a robot's going to come, you know, take your job next week. Because really, uh, you know, automation automates tasks and people do jobs, which are a series of many, many tasks. But something, you know, I think interesting I noticed even at Cluster was we still have human recruiters involved in the process, even though we automate a lot of it. And so I, I probably interviewed um, dozens, you know, dozens to maybe hundreds of recruiters the past year. And I kept noticing that when I would show them our platform, some would get really scared. Wow. Some would get really scared and say, are you trying to get rid of me? And I said, no, I'm interviewing you. I'm like literally trying to hire you. I'm like, I'm literally here trying to hire you. Yeah. And even seeing that, it scared people. And I, and I think it's important. And I realized, you know, it kind of hit me really hard then. We have to bring people along with us on the ride of saying, no, I want to invest in you. These kind of, these parts of your job are better done by a computer. And yeah. now I want you to do things that are uniquely human that only you could do. Like people hire other people. So relationships are always going to be at the core of both interviewing and getting hired and who you work with. So I wasn't a person that's like, oh, I'm just going to match keywords better and get rid of all the humans. I'm like, no, let's, let's have humans do uniquely human things and let's use you know, automation and tools to do all these other pieces like scheduling. That, that's a, a great observation. And really, I agree, it's, it's task substitution. These automation allows task substitution but allows people to become more productive. And that's what we're trying to do. You're doing it with your recruiters, we're doing it on the floor with manufacturing jobs, providing people better tools, augmented reality, artificial intelligence, machine learning, virtual reality, whatever it may be, those are giving people better tools to be more productive and to allow them to become more powerful. Absolutely, I love that you guys call this automation fair because something I have to constantly talk to investors about is, is tell them that all of these jobs aren't going away and, and really getting them to understand that automation is going to augment and expand roles. And it always has. Um, and a lot of the roles that um, went away, like they, they went away decades ago and those, those weren't you know, good jobs. They were kind of the three Ds that we, that we talked about. And so it's, it's funny because when you look back in history, when, when ATMs came out, everyone thought bank tellers wouldn't exist anymore. Sure. And you know what happened? Uh, it, it lowered the cost to open a bank. So you know what we got? More banks, more tellers, and then the role of the bank teller evolved to you know, sell us all types of products or mortgages or credit cards or things like that. The same thing with the computer. Um, one of my favorite uh, magazine, Newsweek, did an article in 1965 about how computers were going to automate all of the jobs and just humans would have no jobs anymore because computers were going to do everything. Yeah. And you know, we got more work, different types of work. And I think that's what we're seeing happening in our industry. And, and right now in California, you know, we're deep in you know, electric vehicles and, and commercial space and, and drones. And you know, there was no drone industry, uh, yeah. real drone industry 20 years ago. So now we're seeing all of these new and really exciting roles um, evolve that we're trying to help people hire for. Yeah, and the automation allows people to become productive and allows people that are, people are productive are going to hire more people. And I, I love the, the study that you mentioned in the magazine. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you look through history, with computers being introduced, with technologies being introduced, over the last 40 years, for every job that's displaced, there's 5.5 that are created. Because technologies really allow additional productivities. And that allows people to hire more people and, and the jobs get better. Yeah, absolutely. They get, they get better and they get more interesting too. So I think now, you know, like you mentioned, we're seeing employers that are really interested in learnability. Like yeah. what, what can you learn next? Like you might not have to know everything because we don't know what's coming next, but are you the right person that's going to be continuously learning 
and that can kind of get get in front of it. Mm -hmm. So one of one of the things now that we look at just internally when I make my own internal hires is there is a huge movement of what's called uh, low code and no code tools. So there's all these things that used to have to be done by developers yeah. now that don't require them. So things like Airtable and things like Webflow, um, it basically has made it so a lot of my non-technical employees can automate tons of workflows. They can do a lot of work on the website and in a tenth of the time and with no developer. So I'm not looking for someone who knows all of that, but I'm looking for people that are, are smart enough and driven enough that they will go learn it. Yeah. Um, because we don't even know what the new tools are going to be that exist next year. We don't. It, it, yeah. It's going to constantly be evolving. We've seen the same thing with data scientists. We're mm -hmm. pushing out more machine learning that a control engineer could just use instead of requiring a data scientist. Because mm -hmm. there's just so many data scientists to go around, there's many more problems than data scientists. Yeah, ab absolutely. And I, and I think all roles are going to be somewhat tech-enabled. So if we're all fighting you know, for the same developers or, or data scientists, I think it's going to be really important to, to find other ways to kind of fill that gap. I, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Kim, it has been so good talking with you. I really appreciate you being on today and joining us live on Automation Fair. And uh, I want to thank everybody for joining us today on live streaming today at Automation Fair. Thank you. Yeah, thanks.